So, Broderick, something uh, I've carried with me for quite a while now when it comes to looking at someone's physique, purely from a aesthetic perspective, mm. is hamstrings. I love hamstrings. I find for a lot of people, hamstrings are really hard to train well and get a significant amount of hypertrophy for a number of different reasons. Um, so, if I see a good set of hamstrings on a physique, straight away I'm thinking, yeah, that person probably they know how to train well. Um, is there anything you would look for in, in a physique athlete or even looking at sort of a strength strength athlete where that gives you a bit of a marker of, yeah, that, that person probably knows their shit. They know what they're doing. Yeah. As a matter of fact, it really is. It's interesting because I suspect you and I look at people very differently because mm -hmm. you look at more of that, you know, body work, th uh, therapy, therapeutic movement. kind of movement yeah, patterns yeah, yeah, kind of yeah, thing. Yeah. Whereas I tend to look more on the almost the... Uh, and and don't, don't misunderstand me, but kind of what I think of as like the chemical level. I think uh, I always reflect back to that idea like if you had no idea what a lion was, you would still know to be scared the shit out of it. Mm -hmm. It's a chemical yeah. thing. Yeah. You just go, oh, oh, yep, yeah. yeah, that's for real. Yeah. Uh, jumping ahead from the bodybuilding to the strength, I do have uh, kind of a checklist. I have that like lion moment mm -hmm. in strength athletes. And I happen to think that it's forearms, traps, and glutes. I've met some strong people that didn't have them, but by and large, I think in a, in a, in a Pecking order, you know, men at a bar, men at a game, whatever. Yeah. I think that it tends to be. You see somebody with big forearms, you're concerned. Yeah. You see somebody with big traps, you're more concerned. They turn around and they have big round glutes, and you're very concerned. Yeah. I think those are the kind of the mentally acute, mm -hmm. combative. That's a problem. Yeah. Big pecs are cool. Big biceps are cool. But I've never really been afraid of a big bicep. Yep. But a big hand attached to a big meaty forearm yeah, yeah. scares shit out of me. And you look, again, we've spoken about uh, a number of times through the weekend about the uh, the powerlifters and strongmen of, of sort of yesteryear, as it were. Absolutely. The, the Kazmaiers, the Ernie Francis. Absolutely. The Pacificos. And you see that's what you... that's. The oh. thing that you see first. Uh, yeah. 100%. Every picture you see of Bill Kazmaier, you see traps, and then you see forearms, yep. and then you see the face. Yep. Absolutely 100%. Yep. So with, with powerlifting, I very much do think that that is the case. Um, even even hands sometimes can be tricked. I've seen some willowy, pretty not that impressive hands, but attached to very big forearms and traps, still still fires my concern yeah. mechanism. Yeah, like Popeye. Yeah, absolutely. Now, now bodybuilding... Um, I tend to kind of shoot off on a hard turn there and not do that oh big 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 forearms thing. Um, what I think is more the what I think of as the subtle muscles. Yeah. Um, when I see a bodybuilder that has let's say upper pecs, mm -hmm. you know, meet up here at the collarbone, that's yeah, yeah. not just some jackass that lays down a bench presses. Yeah. That's somebody who put a little thought into s s training. A, a, a full width and birth of chest movements, yep. that sort of thing. So I, I'll look at, say, upper chest, rear delts, um, thickness in the middle of the back. Yeah. Not necessarily middle like, oh, he has big erectors. I mean middle from top to bottom. Yeah. That area where the traps it's, and the erectors meet. It's something you see missing a lot in... in I don't know how many body lower levels. level shows. This yeah. wide, they turn around, they're paper thin in the middle. Yeah. That, that takes a level of thought and consideration how to get those shoulder yep. blades back and those to me are the kind of yep. things that I think demonstrates the person put some thought into what they're doing yep. um, so yeah that yep. that would be that would be my other or yep. not my other but that would be my bodybuilding thing is kind yes. of middle back upper traps maybe rear delts um, and oh, interesting, something you talked about. Lots of bodybuilders can come forth with this nice big round bicep. Most of that, I think, honestly, is genetics. You get over here on the side and show me some brachialis. Yeah. Now all of a sudden yeah. I'm thinking, hey, that guy's not just doing jackass G curls. Yeah. Something's going on. That's something's a, that's a smart. Yeah. That's a smart or well uh, directed athlete. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I, I yeah, I definitely do think there's little things like that. Interesting as well when you talk about that mid back is just from a. A therapeutic uh, movement standpoint it's something I see as well 
those, as, a, as a weakness. Those yeah. with orthopedic issues through the shoulder uh, primarily, but maybe neck, maybe damp, f flying further down, mid traps, mid lower traps, rhomboids, that area nearly always weak. So aesthetically and functionally, functionally, whatever the hell that is going to mean, but aesthetically, functionally, we're looking at the same thing. I agree, yeah. Yeah. Interesting thoughts on what maybe makes or identifies a skilled strength athlete or bodybuilder. Yeah. It's an interesting conversation. Yeah. From 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 every perspective, it seems to be coming into very similar things. Absolutely. Cool.